technology tells you how you slept and what adjustments you can make. She likes to bed soft. He's more hardcore. So your sleep goes from good to great to wow. Give the gift of amazing sleep only at a sleep number store. Right now, find the lowest payments ever on all beds. Hurry, end Sunday. No better sleep with Sleep Number. We start with that Stormwatch team coverage for you because it feels like winter out there. We're talking about highs in the 20s. Arctic air is taking hold of our region. It's Ooh. a good grip, too. Highs in the 20s. I know. Oh, it's crazy man. how cold it is. But there is some good news, and this will all be over by the end of the weekend. That's something to look forward to. Still, <laughs> we do have some wintry weather to contend with. Before then, let's get started right now with the latest look at temperatures from Stormwatch meteorologist Steve Rudin. Hi, Steve. Hi. A little bit of good news on the way. At least the winds are beginning to ease a little bit, and by the the time you wake up early, early tomorrow morning, it's going to feel just a little bit better out there by tomorrow afternoon, a whole lot better. Look at these wind chill factors out there right now. Single digits inside the Capitol Beltway where the winds have started to settle down. Those wind chills are now finally beginning to move upwards, and that is definitely a good sign. Bus stop forecast for tomorrow. You're still going to want to bundle up thick coat. The hat, the gloves, the scarf, the works, upper teens by pickup as you move through the midday hours, outdoor recess for some of the kids, middle 20s, added clouds later in the day, but it's going to stay dry. And now we're talking about a winter storm watch that's mainly north and west of D.C. It does include Frederick County, Maryland, Garrett, Allegheny, and Washington counties in western Maryland, and then the panhandle of West Virginia. More on what that means for tomorrow night into early Saturday morning coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Steve, we'll see you then. Thank you. Well, frigid or not, many are out and about tonight. There they are. Whether taking in the holiday sights or waiting for that much anticipated movie ticket to Rogue One, the new Star Wars movie. Tom Rousey joins us live with how people are braving the cold this evening. Hi, Tom. Uh, hey, Allison, you know, we're here outside the Uptown Theater where the movie premiered tonight. Right now, the 1045 showing is already going on and inside that theater there. Everybody's nice and warm watching the movie, but trust me, throughout the day and into the night here at the theater, people were very cold waiting in line, and they certainly weren't just cold here. <laughs> After the sun went down at the National Christmas Tree, the face coverings came out, and so did the hoods you'd normally be more likely to see in Siberia. It's really, really pretty, very, very nice. Leroy Plaskett brought his nephew Aiden. It's cold, it's crisp, but it's nice, it's beautiful, to be honest with you. That said, Leroy is from New York. Aiden is from much further south. You're from Florida. What do you think of this weather? It's cold. It's hurting my hands. <laughs> and you're wearing gloves. Yep, it still didn't work. Three miles up the road at the Uptown Theater. Is it going to be worth it? Oh, absolutely. It's Star Wars. How could it not be worth it? The line for the second showing of Rogue One at 1045 started forming about four hours early. I camped out for all of the prequels here at the Uptown back in my crazy college days. Longtime fan Melissa Jones says this is the coldest Star Wars opening night she can remember. When Episode 7 came out last December, it was about 30 degrees warmer. But she and son AJ say it's not bad if you're prepared. I've got tights and uh, leggings and jeans. A coat, a sweatshirt, um, a t-shirt. <laughs> Your things and a hat and my hood and two pairs of socks. And we're about to go get some hand warmers and foot warmers from the <laughs> CVS. I want you to notice something about the sidewalk on Connecticut Avenue right now. There is no one walking on it. That is unusual for a Thursday night here in Northwest, but I have a feeling the weather has something to do with that. By the way, I checked one year ago today. The high was 67 degrees and the low was 47 degrees, so we didn't even come close to reaching that low today. Reporting live in Northwest, I'm Tom Rousey, ABC 7 News. 50 something degrees difference from last year. All right, Tom, thanks. You know, big changes in temperature triggered all kinds of messes across our area. In fact, take a look at this. This was a water main break in Laurel. It made a lake of Cherry Street this afternoon, and it wasn't all water. There was some ice out there, too. WSSC crews tell us they repaired 15 water main breaks across Montgomery and Prince George's counties. They say that they coat the streets with salt to try and avoid any black ice and driving hazards. Well, stay connected with the Stormwatch 7 team around the clock. You can just follow us on Facebook, Twitter uh, at WJLA.com and be sure to download our Stormwatch app.
And we're just chilly. There are other people dealing with this. Look at that school bus just sliding down the street, banging into a truck. I mean, it is a mess out there. 30 states from California all the way up to Maine. Snow is making for dangerous conditions out on the roads. Gusty cold winds are just making it worse. Western Pennsylvania, another chain reaction crash, this time involving 60 cars. Luckily, no one killed. In Chicago this morning, it felt like 19 below zero. Woo. That is so cold that frostbite can actually hit you in less than a half hour. I don't know why you'd even want to be outside. Yeah, wow. Well, let's move on now to some other news of the day. Guilty on all counts. That is the verdict tonight against church shooter Dylan Roof. A federal jury convicted Roof today on 33 counts stemming from that June 2015 shooting that left nine people dead in Charleston, South Carolina. Prosecutors say racial hatred motivated Roof to go to that black church and start shooting during a Bible study.